Hello everybody, this is 5 Minute Nerd and I'm here to talk about Dungeons and Dragons with you again. Dungeons and Dragons is a storytelling role-playing game that forces a bunch of people to sit at the table to do some fun creative problem solving in an imaginary fantasy world with swords and magic. The greatest part of it might be that you can bring people of completely different backgrounds together and unite them through the game. Because everybody is just playing a character, it doesn't really matter who or what you are in real life. Regardless, people are people and sometimes we work in mysterious ways. There are loud players, shy players, eccentric players, funny players, tactical players, overthinking players, etc. And not all of them are easy to please. I see dungeon masters everywhere, including myself, struggling to work out a balance between these very different kinds of players. Sometimes one player can disrupt the whole flow of the game totally by accident. So let's see if we can do something about that, at least in some of the most common cases. Here are five types of D&D players and how to deal with them. Number one, the rules lawyer. The rules lawyer has memorized all the core rule books of D&D and has probably played as a dungeon master before, which is why he just can't get out of his skin in your campaign. He'll be there to correct you and the other players whenever you're missing out on some small rule or when you're fudging something slightly off the books. While it can be a good thing to have someone on board who supports the DM with keeping track of the rules, it could grow into a real problem at the table. Sometimes you just want to have fun and move the game forward without spending precious minutes looking for some minor details about grappling an enemy or the weight of a tin pot. Nothing is worse than constantly pulling the brakes on the game to discuss about the rules. It mostly just kills the mood and takes the players out of the flow. The solution? Establish certain guidelines at the table. For example, no nitpicking and correcting during the game. Let the rules lawyer bring up the critique and mistakes after the session and hear him out when he does. Be grateful that he's trying to help. He probably has a point and you don't want to carry mistakes into the next session. But as long as it's not something really major, it can definitely wait until after the game. Number two, the phone junkie. Being a dungeon master means to entertain the people around your table and that takes guts and energy and preparation. So of course it can be quite frustrating if one of your players is constantly fiddling with his phone, writing messages or just absent-minded. The bugbear swings its mace in rage. He's coming at you, Carl. What do you do? Carl? What? What? See, I get it. A session of D&D takes a few hours and it's almost impossible to pay attention all the time. But distracting yourself and the players around you just makes it worse for everyone. The more you get distracted, the less you understand and care about what's going on in-game. Also, it's just kind of disrespectful to the DM who put a lot of effort into these sessions and the other players who might actually want to engage with you. The solution? First off, find out why their player is constantly distracted. Maybe he's bored because he doesn't enjoy a certain part of the game. If so, maybe you can tweak the game a bit to get him more excited. Shove his character under the spotlight and show him that it pays off to focus on the game. Also, just call for more breaks. Whenever you see that the attention drops around the table, take a short break for coffee, drinks or phones. You may want to consider banning phones from the table completely though. Not as a punishment, but to keep your players as immersed as possible. Number 3. The Role Player the role player is here for the full experience. He'll talk like his character, act like his character, he may even go the extra mile and dress like his character. Role play can be a big part of the ED, depending on what kind of game you're running. It is a role playing game after all. Pretending to be someone else and playing someone you can't be in real life is what makes this hobby so appealing in the first place. The role player might speak in accents or bring some props along which can be entertaining as hell and may even encourage the rest of the group to dive a little bit deeper into their own characters. It only gets problematic when the group is mostly made up of casual low-key players who are not really into the acting part that much and that player is constantly in the center of attention. As a dungeon master, you could try to find a balance by toning your own roleplay up or down, use strange voices, wear a silly hat to the game, bring even more silly hats for the other players to the game, and try to lure everyone into some light-hearted, silly roleplaying fun. Or keep it casual yourself in contrast to the hardcore roleplayer. You could also simply tell that player to take it down a notch in general. But let him shine and go crazy in certain moments. For example, by asking him how exactly it looks when he kills that orcish wizard. Number 4. The Dark Edge Lord. Well, this player brought a special character sheet along. His character is named after some dark anime figure, his backstory is I am a heartbroken orphan and his features are that he's a loner, he's moody and he's just not good with people. This is all fun in games until the player decides to act like a dick in-game because 
that's what his character would do. Dungeons and Dragons allows you to be anything you want, and you can cherish that and come up with a thousand wild character concepts. But never forget that you're still playing a game with a group of people, and everyone, including the Dungeon Master, is supposed to have fun here. Your character is not an excuse for bad behavior at the table. If your character is a bully to the others or constantly questions the ways and goals of the adventure, you're just making it harder for everyone else. Playing an emotionally cold, grumpy ninja fighter might be interesting to you or sound cool in the first place, but honestly just isn't that much fun for everyone involved, most of the time. So maybe take that in mind when you're creating your character and think about a figure that sounds cool to you and could work within a group. For a dungeon master, there's really no easy way to deal with this in-game, but you can always tackle this problem outside of the game by just talking to the player, helping with the character creation before the campaign begins, or simply by pushing him in the right direction by being honest and frank. Number five. The casual. The casual player heard of Dungeons and Dragons before and definitely wanted to give it a try, but doesn't have the time or the motivation to actually delve into the rulebooks. He just can't remember what he can or can't do during combat, he still doesn't know the difference between athletics and acrobatics, and of course, he forgot to bring his own dice. Again. For some people, the rules of Dungeons and Dragons can be overwhelming at first, and the time and dedication it takes to keep a game running may seem a bit much for people who just want to give this crazy thing called pen and paper a try. It's important to not alienate those people, but instead showing them how cool this game can be. Anyhow, everybody really interested in this hobby should at least read the basic rules and learn how to properly play with their own character. It's really not that hard. As a dungeon master, you can be as helpful as possible just by casually repeating certain rules, doing most of the bookkeeping of combat yourself, or even simplifying the rules for the casual gamer. It might get a bit troubling if the group is mixed and everyone on the table is getting hands deep into the game but one person. Maybe hand that person your player's handbook and politely ask him to finally read the damn manual. Otherwise, there are hundreds of great pen and paper systems out there with even lighter rules that you could try out together. So much for five cases of that player. Dealing with the humans behind the fantasy characters we play sometimes is kind of an adventure on its own. But needless to say, in the end, there is always one solution. Take the player aside and have an honest, friendly talk. I hope this was helpful to some of you trying to keep their groups of vastly different personalities engaged. Have fun at the table and see you next time.